Beautiful. Cool. All right. So those who have joined just now, we have started a couple of minutes back. Uh, so in today's session, we are going to look at what agility stands for. When we talk about agile, lean, what does it mean? So we'll, we, are, we are going to go back to the roots, agile values, principles, uh, practices and frameworks. I know it's a whole new world. Uh, when, when you look at the agile, uh, there are so many frameworks, so many practices, so many uh, acronyms, uh, jargons that sometimes for a newcomer, it becomes a bit confusing. Uh, next thing which we are going to look is uh, all about, uh, you know, leadership roles in the Agile team and group. Uh, quite often when you want to move into Agile world, you get confused. You don't know where to start. What's the right fit for me uh, based on what are your drivers? What are your passions? And then we are going to talk about practicality, how you can move into or transition into that Agile leadership role, what different avenues you can explore. Uh, and uh, then at the end, we'll have a brief question and answer session. session. So that's about it uh, for today. So if we look at the definition in the book of agility, uh, it simply refers that agility is nothing but ability to move quickly and easily or ability, ability to think and understand quickly in the context of uh, uh, in the context of business. When we talk about agility, it's all about responding to the change compared to your competitors, responding to the change, responding and meeting those customer needs uh, so mm -hmm. that, you know, you are always there to serve customer at the forefront. Uh, so that's the whole idea of agility. Now let's look at quickly uh, what are the roots of lean. So when we talk about lean, it, it goes back to, you know, world war or prior to that, it started with industrial revolution. It started with the mass production manufacturing. So even if we talk about Toyota production system for which, you know, Taichi Ohono is always considered as a, you know, father, founding father of Toyota production system. Uh, it has actual roots uh, way back into, you know, 1850s. And in fact, uh, Henry Ford uh, with manufacturing plants and, you know, assembly lines, it bringing in efficiencies and flow through the, you know, uh, car manufacturing plants. He is the one who has actually, you know, made this lean thinking, lean mindset quite popular. Now, how does that fit into our world when we are talking about agility? So if you have to look at only one thing, one page, probably this is the one which you need to refer, House of Lean. Uh, those who have got exposure to scale agile framework, uh, which is another, you know, uh, agile framework might have seen this. But essentially what it talks about is that when you want to have agility, through means of lean, you need to focus on few things. First thing is that always focus on value, value from the customer's point of view, what customer want, right? And then make that value available to customer at the shortest sustainable time. Uh, again, there is a big em emphasis on shortest sustainable time because we don't want uh, value to be delivered by compromising on quality, by compromising on, you know, morale of people and society by compromising on what customer is looking for. Uh, so having that right balance while delivering value is at the, at the core of the lean. Second thing, which I would like to highlight is lean put a lot of emphasis on the people and culture. It says that you should respect people for what they are. You should respect existing culture. Uh, it's one of those things quite often gets lost when people embark on the big agile transformation journey. Uh, and where, you know, a lot of things are expected to be changed all of a sudden. Uh, what Lean suggests is that you should work with your people by establishing trust-based relationship. Understand from them. They are the one who know what happens on the ground. Uh, understand from them why it's happening, how it's happening. Uh, after that, once you gain confidence from them, it becomes quite easy to bring in any changes and how to do it. Second thing is all about flow. So ensuring that you are able to deliver things at a sustainable pace without getting anything stuck in, in the system. Uh, quite often I give example when it comes to flow about traffic system. So if you can see on the road, there are so many vehicles going, right? Now, there you don't expect all road to be occupied all the time, because if that happens, just imagine if some car has broken down, there's emergency, then everyone will be stuck in the uh, uh, on the road 
So similarly, in a flow-based system, you expect that there is a predictability, there is a, a, a bit of opportunity when you will be able to deliver things uh, at a sustainable pace. Innovation is most important thing, and sometimes uh, innovation and relentless improvement goes hand in hand, wherein uh, if you might have heard Kaizen is a principle which talks about having improvements as a part of culture. So thinking that we are here to deliver things and every day when we work, we want to deliver things better uh, based on those you know, improvements. At the bottom or foundation, what, what's there is called leadership. Uh, the lean thinking is that unless you have got leaders onboarded, no change can be sustained. And unless you have got leaders with the right kind of mindset, it will become highly and highly difficult to sustain any change. So leaders play, you know, vital roles while incorporating any changes. So that's that's our house of lean. That's about lean thinking. And it's one of those aspects of agility. So you, you might have noticed that we are not just talking about agile. We are talking about agility, which encompasses lean as well as agile. Now, when we look at Agile, probably uh, as a quick refresher, it might be worthwhile to have a look at this video, which talks about how that Agile manifesto was created. What are the pillars? What are the those four values on basis of all those Agile frameworks have been created? So let's let's have a look at this video. So agility is the concept of including Agile and Lean, is it? Sorry, go on. Agility is the concept of including Agile and Lean, both, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Agile is responding to a change while lean is uh, reducing uh, the bottlenecks or resolving wherever uh, man, uh, manual interventions as early as possible. Is that uh, the way to represent it or how? So lean is purely focused on process efficiencies as efficiencies, as earlier, yeah. right? Mm. And then agile is all about uh, human angle, how you can bring in those changes. Even though lean focuses on respect for people and culture, Agile talks more about those values when individuals interactions and other things are quite quite often emphasized. So when we talk about agility, we don't put ourselves in a one box. We say that, you know, probably you can leverage both things from the lean as well as agile world to deliver better outcome. Yeah, but uh, agile focuses on people from responding to changes from a people point of view. Is that uh, the right way of understanding? Yeah, uh, what I will suggest probably you can park this question. Uh, uh, once we go through the you know agile aspect of agility, probably things will be more clear. Is that okay, fine? all right. Cool. So it was 2001 and a group of software visionaries gathered at a ski resort to share their experiences and figure out why so many software projects were failing. This wasn't just about documenting best practices. They knew the industry required a fundamental shift in values. And so the Agile Manifesto was born. So it was 2001 and a group of software visionaries gathered at a ski resort to share their experiences and figure out why so many software projects were failing. This wasn't just about documenting best practices. They knew the industry required a fundamental shift in values. And so the Agile Manifesto was born declaration of four bold value statements that became the basis of a new approach to software development and would change the industry forever. But what were those four values and why should you care? Let's take a look. But first, it is important to point out that the Agile Manifesto ends by noting that all of the things mentioned are important, just that some things must be prioritized over others. Okay, here we go. Number one, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. This doesn't mean throw processes and tools out the window. It simply means that a good face-to-face -face chat should trump rigid workflows and impersonal forms of communication. Number two, working software over comprehensive documentation. Makes sense, right? But traditional software development often produced extensive documentation before a program was released for initial testing. Some documentation is good, but wouldn't it be better to have the program than a book describing it? Number three, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Sure, you'll want to start out with some initial guidelines, but instead of locking customers in a cage by defining the exact details of the project before it starts, teams and customers should collaborate to find the best solutions. And finally, number four, responding to change over following a plan. Nothing ever goes entirely according to plan. So instead of sticking with something that isn't working, it's much more effective to make adjustments as your situation changes. 
following the values isn't always easy. But when you build them into your team's processes, customers notice, and the payoff is huge. Which of the Agile values do you think is the most important? Any thoughts from anyone? Which one resonate most with you? Out of those four? The last one. The, uh, the human the angle. Customer. Sorry, go on. I think uh, uh, one of the first things is about uh, the interactions individuals and processes and tools so it's all about people so what you also said uh, ag uh, agile is about human is, is looking at the human angle and i think that's very important absolutely absolutely in fact uh, when you work in an environment wherein people are not uh, you know clear about all those taxonomy you want to connect to them by understanding what are the problems opportunities which uh, you know they have got you might just want to leverage more on individuals interactions rather than just introducing jira as a tool or you know some complex yeah, process right that way you can simplify things and that's that's my uh, you know my my favorite one as well uh, particularly when you are engaging with a new team or new organization you might want to heavily rely on individuals and interactions cool now when we talk about frameworks so Agile Manifesto was created in 2001. I reckon in this FAPE, we completed 20 years of Agile Manifesto. But uh, when we talk about frameworks, there are several frameworks which are available in the market. Uh, and uh, you might be familiar with few frameworks. Certain frameworks are, frameworks are quite popular and familiar uh, compared to others. But more or less, there are a few frameworks which I will highly recommend or strongly recommend to you know become familiar with if you want to play the role of an Agile leader in any organization. And that's what we are going to cover rather than going through each and every framework. So even before Agile Manifesto was created, so this is the timeline, uh, Ken Quick and Jim Highsmith, there's something called as extreme programming, a lot of uh, you know DevOps practices or pair programming, uh, then TDD, BDD, all those things came uh, right before Agile Manifesto was created. Even Scrum was created or established before Agile Manifesto. So sometimes people get caught up in, and you might have seen that on a LinkedIn, like who, which is better or who is who, who need to be or well, need to be referred when it comes to Agile or Agility. But in a nutshell, 2001 was formally Manifesto was created. And after that, uh, there are several frameworks which got established. And we are going to look into a few frameworks today just to understand how best you can apply all those learnings which are required to bring in agility as a, a in an organization as an agile leader. So discipline agile toolkit is a unique toolkit wherein rather what, what it suggests is that rather than sticking with a one particular framework and one particular ways of working, you should have an open mind. Whenever you work in any organization, understand what are the context. Uh, what are the challenges? Where are those teams? What are your goals? And on basis of that, you should choose how you want to apply agility in that particular you know, situation. So it's a goal-based approach wherein expectation is that you will leverage a lot of tools, a lot of you know, practices, principles from different frameworks, rather than just thinking that everyone need to follow Scrum or everyone need to follow Kanban or everyone need to follow one particular framework. So let's have a quick look at this two minute video, which will help you understand what this discipline agile toolkit is and how it can actually help you to, you know, uh, become successful agile leader in your organization. Discipline agile is unique. It's not another method, it's not another framework, it's a toolkit, a hybrid of existing agile strategies that are being brought together made easy to use so that you can pick the strategies that make sense to you so that you can customize your way of working for your situation. Your organization very likely has teams in different situations. You'll have small teams, you'll have large teams, you'll have project teams, you'll have non-project teams, maybe a, a long-standing product team, for example. You'll have teams that face regulatory concerns. Some of these teams will have people working from home, some will have people working from around the world. The implication 
is that you need a process toolkit that enables your teams to choose the right way of working for the situation that they face. And this is exactly what Discipline Agile is all about. Discipline Agile can be used in many different kinds of situations. You can use it on pure Agile projects, you can use it on hybrid projects. We provide a selection of life cycles, lean life cycles, scrum life cycles, continuous delivery, many different flavors, hundreds of strategies, and we provide you guidance to understand which ones work in which situation. Therefore, it will increase your chances of success. The other great use of Discipline Agile is that if you're struggling with your method or your framework, you can use the toolkit and the strategies inside it to help improve your situation. So start where you are. You don't have to start over again. Whatever you're currently doing, use the toolkit to help you improve your situation. Discipline Agile is often adopted by organizations that have either undergone a Agile transformation or at least are attempting or struggling with an Agile transformation. And very often an interesting lesson that these organizations have learned is that one process size does not fit all. So they've tried to adopt Scrum across all of their teams or SAFE across all of their teams. And even though these are great frameworks, um, they don't apply to all situations. Discipline Agile is different because we assume, we embrace the idea that teams will work in different ways and we help you to choose your own way of working to choose your wow and in order to tailor <laughs> to meet the context of the situation that you face in fact uh, if you are keen to explore further there is a book called choose your wow you can you can search that book uh, that will help you understand what this discipline agile toolkit is Usually, uh, I recommend, uh, you know, lo a lot of uh, agile, aspiring agile leaders to do this discipline agile course only when they have got clarity or understanding about basic frameworks like Scrum, Safe, Kanban, so that uh, when you go in that particular course, you have got a better understanding when to apply what rather than just getting overwhelmed by a lot of information, which you might not be able to correlate with. Cool. So with this now, now look at, uh, so, so far what we have looked at, we have looked at different, uh, you know, lean, agile practices, principles, and a few frameworks at a high level. Now, when it comes to dealing with the reality in a large complex enterprise, not always everyone will be able to deliver things independently. And in, in, in such situations, what you need, you need something which will help you to deliver that large solution, uh, large program of work by interacting with different individuals, different teams. And that's nothing but, you know, scaling agile. Sometimes it is called as applying agility or agile at a team of teams level or groups level. Uh, if you are following Spotify language, some in, in certain organizations, you, you might have heard about tribes uh, and teams might be called as a squad. If you follow scale agile framework, those team of teams might be called as agile release train and then uh, teams might be called as agile teams. but Nevertheless, so these are the latest findings from the 12th State of Agile report, uh, which was published just few few days back or perhaps, you know, in, uh, last month. And in that it was found after doing a lot of research that uh, when it comes to scaling, uh, there are different frameworks which are available in the market. However, the topmost is the SAFE or Scale Agile framework, which is applied at largely into 29% of organizations whom, uh, you know, uh, these questions were asked. So with that in mind, and there are other things which you can explore, but uh, I reckon if you want to follow the thumb rule, explore a few frameworks which are applied at a team level, Scrum Kanban, then look at one or two frameworks which are applied at a team level or group level, and then look at Discipline Agile as a whole toolkit so that you will have better understanding about, okay, what needs to be picked up and when it needs to be applied when you are playing role of an Agile coach, a senior leader, or uh, you know product owner. Uh, Sandeep, I have a question, if I may. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, Sandeep, how safe, uh, uh, safe 5.0, which is safe as list, and uh, Scrum at scale, and the course Discipline Agile, how is it different? Or is it the same uh, framework we are talking about? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So if, you, if we go back to the earlier video, which was about Discipline Agile, it's a toolkit which talks about you need to understand the context. You need to understand the problem which your team or organization is trying to solve. And then apply one of those five agile delivery life cycle. It might be Scrum. It might be Lean or Kanban. It might be program construct, which is nothing but safe. It might be Lean exploratory, which is based on you know Lean startup uh, fundamentals. 
or it might be traditional. So when, when it comes to applying things in the real world, you need to understand how is the funding model? How is the team constructed? What kind of product we are delivering? Is that something which can be done by the team independently without relying, having dependency on other teams? Then probably you can go ahead with a scrum, right? But if in order to produce any feature capability or increment of value to customer, you need to have more than you know five to 12 teams who need to work together then in that case, you need to pick up safe as a model and then go ahead with that. If you face situation wherein you can't define scope upfront, right? You need to do a lot of experiment because that's a niche market. You are a group of scientists who need to run those experiments. Then probably you need to apply that lean exploratory, uh, you know, uh, methodology, which was mentioned in discipline agile. So if you want to build the, uh, you know, whole paint the whole picture, the way you need to look at it is that scrum fit for the team level. Uh, uh, probably Kanban fit for the team who don't want to forecast and plan way too ahead, but need to have that more responsiveness where work can be pulled in. Safe is more where you have got 50 to 125 people who need to work together against common goal. And Discipline Agile is a umbrella. So it's a framework. It's not a framework. It's a toolkit, which helps you understand when to apply what. And that's something which gets missed when you just stick with the one framework. So Discipline Agile toolkit and all others are the frameworks. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, Sandeep. No worries. So let's let's have a look at SAFE. We have talked a lot about it. I think few, few of you or most of you haven't used SAFE or haven't got exposure to SAFE. So this video will help you understand what SAFE stands for, what this Scale Agile framework stands for, and how it is supposed to be used. the operating system for organizations to achieve business agility through the seven core competencies of the lean enterprise team and technical agility agile product delivery enterprise solution delivery lean portfolio management organizational agility continuous learning culture and lean agile leadership it all starts with team and technical agility and specifically with the agile team an Agile team is a group of five to 11 members which can define, build, test, and where applicable, deploy value in short time boxes called iterations. The team uses Agile methods like Scrum or Kanban or a combination thereof. The team starts each iteration by planning what they can deliver in an iteration planning event. The product owner provides guidance on what needs to be built by representing the customer on the team. Every day, the team meets to discuss how they're progressing toward their iteration goals in a daily stand-up. At the end of each iteration, the team demonstrates the work they've completed in an iteration review. Before the next iteration, the team reflects on what to improve for the next iteration in an iteration retrospective. The Scrum Master is the coach of the team, helping it improve and facilitating the various events. In an enterprise, multiple teams need to work together as a team of Agile teams to deliver value. In SAFE, these teams of Agile teams are called an Agile Release Train, or ART, and include 50 to 125 people. ARTs are cross-functional, including all the people needed to explore customer needs and then build and deliver solutions to customers. The ART uses agile product delivery practices to deliver the right value at the right time. The ART works within a time box called a program increment or PI, which is typically five iterations long. The ART follows similar events to teams. At the beginning of the PI, all teams come together to plan their work for the PI in a PI planning event. PI planning is facilitated by the release train engineer who serves as the coach for the art. Product management provides the vision and backlog. The system architect provides architectural guidance. The teams then plan the work for the PI, identifying what can be delivered. A program board is used to visualize the dependencies between the teams. Every iteration, the art demos the integrated solution across all teams in a system demo. And at the end of the PI, all teams meet to retrospect on how to improve in an inspect and adapt event. 
Product managers use customer centricity and design thinking to understand customer problems and discover solutions that are desirable, viable, feasible, and sustainable. The ARC builds a continuous delivery pipeline and uses DevOps practices to release on demand, delivering value when it is needed. Sometimes a single Agile release train is not enough to deliver a solution, and the enterprise solution delivery competency is needed. A solution train is used to coordinate multiple arts and suppliers to deliver large, complex solutions. Solution management has content authority on what gets built. The solution architect oversees the architecture across arts, and a solution train engineer coaches and facilitates solution train events. In order to align strategy and execution, Lean Portfolio Management provides a way to create strategic themes and a portfolio vision to align solution development with enterprise strategy. Lean Portfolio Management helps enterprises organize around the delivery of value in value streams, as well as fund these value streams to avoid the problems that are typically associated with project cost accounting. Having strategy, however, is not enough. Organizational agility provides the tools that help portfolios achieve strategy agility and change direction quickly when needed, organizing and reorganizing around value. It builds the environment for flow of value across the entire enterprise and beyond solution development and helps grow lean thinking people and agile teams. Continuous learning culture drives the culture of innovation and relentless improvement to help enterprises become learning organizations. Finally, a lean enterprise is built on lean agile leadership. To achieve and sustain business agility, leaders must embody, teach, and exhibit the mindsets, values, and principles that are the basis of lean and agile. Lead by example and guide everyone toward this new way of working using the implementation roadmap as a guide. Together, these seven competencies build the lean enterprise and make true business agility possible. So that's, that's about uh, Scale Agile framework, which can be applied in a context wherein you know you are you are pro trying to solve a big problem which requires 50 to 125 team members uh, to work together collectively aligned to the one common goal. Now, uh, we are not going to do deep dive into each and every framework. The whole purpose of this is this session is to provide you understanding at a high level what different things are there, what to look for as a uh, someone who want to grow as an agile leader or probably irrespective of job title if you want to apply those learnings where you you can look for certain things now this takes us to the next level which is let's say that you have got all those things you know what is a scrum what is kanban you know what's safe and uh, you have mastered art of you know applying discipline agile toolkit based on the goal where what need to be achieved but still, if you are facing resistance and it, those who are seasoned professional, you might have seen that, like even if you go after doing training, after doing you know, a lot of study and try to implement certain changes, there is quite often resistance, right? Now, how to deal with that? Now, when we talk about agility, it's all about responding to the change, uh, having an open mindset, growth mindset, when people are ready to experiment and come up with a better outcome. And uh, while doing that, uh, as an agile leader, you need to master two, at least two skills. First one is change management. And second one is having ability to think as a system thinker, connect dots, look beyond what's obvious, and then, you know, help those team members, those teams, groups, as well as organization to grow uh, in the ever changing market. So enterprise agility university is, uh, um, you know, latest one which has come up with an, a, a new techniques and tactics which can be applied whenever you are facing resistance to change and it's on basis of this book leading exponential change so i'll highly recommend reading this book if you want to go beyond you know, uh, agile scrum or kanban to find what need to be done when it comes to dealing with the people when it comes to leading the change as a change agent uh, doesn't matter what's your title whether scrum master agile coach agile program manager or whatever it may be uh, so that's the whole uh, new world wherein you explore from the human perspective by understanding how brain works. Whenever there is a change, 
our first reaction is that do I need to change what's there for me right and what will happen if I don't change and there are several examples probably we'll have diff different session when we can talk more about this topic but you might have come across situations where certain people are open to change what they need is direction right whereas other people they don't care about change they say that okay why why the heck I should change things are working as expected since several years and what's in it for me now based on that you need to apply different uh, you know strategies as a change consultant scrum master or agile coach and then try to bring in uh, those significant changes on the ground and if one of the yeah uh, one of the things that i've come across a lot in my work is uh, is the fixed and the growth mindsets and uh, as as, as we, you've just spoken about i think it's a good good examples of uh, through that book, etc. Uh, one of the things that you see on the internet a lot is, is describing uh, each person as a fixed or growth mindset, what they're like. What you don't see a lot when mm -hmm. you search for information is how a manager can assist people to yep. change from a fixed to a growth. Mm -hmm. And that's an area which uh, which I'm interested in, and it's, I've had a lot of uh, resistance in that mm -hmm. and providing those techniques, which I'm assuming, which is what you've just been talking about, yeah, uh, is really good because as a manager, our role is often, or as a manager, I'm saying, as someone who's coaching, being with people, uh, yep. helping the team, agile. It's all about moving from fix to to uh, to growth mindset. So, uh, yeah, point there that you made, I think, from from my point of view. Perfect, perfect. And and, and in this particular uh, you know world, enterprise agility university, it has come up with different tactics. Uh, which we can cover sometime later, but it talks about going beyond emotional intelligence, empathy. And then they have got something called as reframing, where you understand from that person's point of view what, how things are perceived and what else can be done. Uh, so probably that's a whole new area to explore if you are facing a lot of resistance or if you are facing a lot of challenges to bring in even simple changes in an existing team environment. Uh, so uh, I highly, highly recommend exploring this this area of knowledge if you if you are, you want to you know go in that particular aspect. So let's quickly watch this video, which will provide some context about you know what this enterprise agility is and uh, how it helps you to go beyond uh, agile frameworks and bring in you know those changes by leveraging uh, neuroscience or how brain operates, how as a human being we react to change. The way companies manage change has undergone dramatic shifts in recent years. One thing has become clear. Human beings are not physiologically prepared for the constant alterations in processes, roles, and ways of working. That's why at Enterprise Agility University, we have developed the most advanced courses to help change consultants from all over the world meet the new needs. Find out today how we can help you succeed. Enterprise Agility University, where science meets organizational change. So when we talk about, uh, you know, Enterprise Agility, what stand uh, this particular university has taken? Here you don't talk about team and technical agility in detail. You don't whole understanding is that when you are exploring this area, you are already aware of classic agile, which is, you know, uh, different frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, SAFE, uh, so on and so forth. Now you are talking about organizational change or team level or group level changes. And that's when you need to have a look at all those five type of agility. So technical agility is classic agility when you try to have, you know, DevOps practices in place. You want to have people who are collaborating through Scrum or Kanban cadences. But beyond that, you need to look at mental agility. And that's what I was referring earlier. When you try to connect with the person by applying different tactics, when they are resisting to the change, um, outcome agility is all about aligning everyone towards what outcome we want to deliver. Structural agility is all about what kind of roles, what kind of structures, processes needs to be in place if you want people to gel together. Social agility is all about understanding that in a social environment, uh, what can be acting as a barriers. So if you want to have team members gel together, working towards common goal, what different uh, you know, neuroscience-based tactics you can apply so that there, there is a high level of social uh, you know, agility or social density when team members are interacting with each other. 
So uh, that's a whole new area wherein you can explore different, uh, you know, approaches, different tactics through which you can bring in changes in the organization. This course or this area is highly recommended for those who are acting as a scrum master or agile coach or, you know, change manager uh, since, since at least three to five years, uh, because unless you go there with the real world challenges and examples, you won't be able to connect. So it's not for someone who is newbie uh, to the agile world. It's more suitable for someone who is aspiring to explore this area of agility, wherein not a lot of frameworks have focused. Even uh, safe framework doesn't talk about how to deal with resistance, how to deal with change. Uh, Discipline Agile Toolkit talks about emotional intelligence, how to create high performing teams. Uh, but again, that's a one of one of the six or seven lessons. Uh, whole, a, whole focus there is not on everything which is mentioned here. So it's a different area of knowledge, which you, if, if you want to explore, you can have a look at it. Now, we are going to look into different agile leadership roles. Quite often when people want to start playing these leadership roles, uh, they want some guidance. They want to know what's in there. So it all starts with understanding what is your passion, where you want to go. Do you, do you love working with customers, understanding you know, uh, customers' problems, needs? Then probably product owner is the right role for you. Do you, do you, do you, uh, you know, want to make big impact talk with a lot of people, leaders, then agile coaching, consulting might be something you want to do. Do you like to make uh, changes into day-to-day -day life of a team members? So then probably scrum master or squad lead might be another role. Uh, if you have got a traditional background in a project management, you want to look at everything, uh, finance, resource management, risk, blah, 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 then probably agile program manager or delivery manager is another area which we can explore. So let's have a quick look at all those different agile leadership roles. Uh, since we have got brief idea about what different frameworks or you know, skills are required to play successful role in agile world. As this picture is shown, <laughs> whole idea in agile world is that you are not boss, you are not a manager. So essentially, doesn't matter what's your title, you are supposed to act as a servant leader. What, what does that servant leader stands for? It has got servant and leader. So as a leader, you are supposed to take a charge, help your team members to grow. Uh, quite often I give example of teacher who is teaching primary school students, like they are not there to prove point, right? They are there to grow those kids. So quite often they, they mentor them, they teach them, they provide right kind of environment, they challenge them. Uh, that's quite different than a typical manager who want to get things done by hook or crook. That's the key, key difference. So, if you aspire to become an agile leader, uh, these are the roles which probably you can explore. If you want to become an individual contributor, that's fine, nothing wrong in it. But still, if you happen to work in an agile environment, then as an agile practitioner, there are certain things which you should be aware. So we are going to explore that. First two roles, which are mentioned here, team coach and product owner. Uh, explicitly, I have mentioned team coach because quite often in many organizations, Scrum is not the only one framework which is applied to bring in agility, right? And in such cases, e even in my recent experience, uh, we don't, I have come across organizations wherein there is no Scrum Master role. So whole idea there is, there's a squad lead or there's a team lead who is supposed to bring in those changes which are required at the team level. And he or she might leverage Scrum, might leverage Kanban, might leverage something else to bring in that agility. So it's a team focus role wherein team members might be nine to 12, Product owner, product manager is more about understanding what customer are looking for, focusing on customer and then helping to helping teams to create that solution by acting as a voice of customer. Uh, so again, it's a team level role. If you happen to you know, aspire to become a product manager, that's when you look at the large solution, large problem which needs to be solved with the help of multiple teams, multiple product owners. Then- Sandeep, uh, yep. Sandeep one question. Um, it may not be, totally relevant for this, but yeah, let me post here. Um, so if you're not working on a client side, I mean, if you don't belong to a client uh, team, okay, mm -hmm. you're from a service provider's environment, and how do you differentiate between a BA role and a product owner role here? That's a good question. So quite often, 
you might transition or you might be acting as a proxy product owner, a fake product owner, or whatever title might be there based on the uh, you know framework which is used. So in order to play a role of a product owner, product manager, you need to have that business acumen. And we are going to explore that. In environment wherein you are working for a client or probably that product owner role is not present, quite often heavily, you might be relying on someone who is playing role of a business owner or business analyst or someone who is representing business knowledge. So in that context, Excellent. yeah. So, and that's why don't get hung up with the titles, which I mentioned here. Uh, just let's let's focus more on the skills and what things are required to play this role so title might be something else right but at the end of the day when we talk about product management when we talk about product ownership there are key things key skills which are required i get you thank you okay. so first two roles are at team level then uh, next two roles which are agile program manager or delivery manager and agile coach consultant these are the team of teams level role or group level role, wherein as a delivery manager or program manager who is working in agile environment, you might want to support product owners or scrum masters uh, based on what kind of, you know, uh, organizational structure is present. Uh, but you have got delivery or program related, uh, you know, responsibilities, whereas agile coach or consultant, it's someone who is uh, expert scrum master, senior scrum master, uh, if you want to apply that logic who has got experience in multiple frameworks, multiple ways of working, who can guide and coach, you know, uh, squad leads, scrum masters, as well as product owners, so on and so forth. And then agile practitioner is agile team member uh, who has got subject matter expertise. He might, he or she might be architect, he or she might be, you know, senior DevOps lead, uh, but still in agile world, if uh, you want to play, uh, you know, effectively your role, you need to know certain things. So that's, that's covered uh, in that. Now, going back to what Sai was mentioning earlier, in your organizations, you might be play, playing different role or you, your title might be something different. But when we talk about agile leadership skills, at high level, these are the skills which are required. So first one is expert level knowledge of agile frameworks and methodologies. Uh, it might start with team level frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, Scrumban, Lean Startup, then uh, team, at team, team of team or group level uh, frameworks like safe, uh, discipline agile toolkit, which can help you to pick and choose when to apply what. Next thing is uh, product management and ownership, then agile planning, reporting and metrics. Quite often, a lot of, lot of frameworks doesn't put uh, enough emphasis on agile planning, reporting and metrics. In a big organizations, when you are looking to deliver outcomes, these things play a crucial role. And that's why that's another niche skill which you need to have. And last one, last but, last but not the least, which we have explored is change management and system thinking by looking at enterprise agility foundational skills, which are quite crucial if you want to bring in and sustain that change. So let's look at quickly, you know, one by one, all roles. Uh, so team coach or squad lead is one who has got these primary focus areas wherein you are supposed to be a good facilitator. You should be able to uh, you know, nurture uh, and uh, make existing teams, high performing teams through learning, right kind of mindset, able to connect dot by drawing big picture and have product knowledge. Because at the end of the day, you are there to support team, product owner, as well as organization. So you need to have all those skills and then change management, which is quite important because you are supposed to be someone who is going to bring in change and people will be looking at you based on where you are or what stage in the journey where team members are. So these are the focus areas. Uh, quite often when you start your career as a team coach or squad lead or scrum master, uh, your focus area might be more on uh, ensuring that team, team levels maturity is high uh, and you are providing them right kind of support, right kind of uh, guidance. So at the start, more focus is on, uh, you know, product owner, if product owner is new, as a squad lead or team coach, you are supposed to help them understand which techniques need to be applied. Uh, and then organizational level focus, it might be a bit less at the start, but as teams become mature, as you gain more traction within an organization, understand how things work, uh, you might want to contribute towards uh, organizational goal by removing those systematic challenges 
Now, if you want to commence your journey in this particular role and you haven't had got any formal education, then what you can do, you can start with something as simple as, you know, uh, having basic certification in a, uh, as a scrum master. Now, few of you might have done already CSM, PSM, then in that case, what I will recommend that rather than exploring uh, another scrum master certification, you might want to have a holistic approach where you can explore different areas. So product ownership, if that's not something which you have done and you haven't got a lot of knowledge, then scale agile product owner, product manager course might be right fit for you where in, in a single go, uh, you will be able to explore how scale agile framework works plus what are the roles, responsibilities and how you can support product owner and product managers. If you haven't explored anything about Scrum and Kanban and you are starting fresh, no certifications, then probably Scrum Ban will be another thing wherein you will be introduced to both worlds, Scrum as well as Kanban and how you can apply practices from both areas. Uh, Kanban, again, if you have explored Scrum, if you have explored SAFE, if you have explored, uh, you know, a different day frameworks, but Kanban is something which matters to you or to your team, then you can uh, look at Kanban professionals. Kanban professionals. So going back to earlier slide, it's uh, again, depends on where you are as a professional and where you are. Sandeep? Yes. Yes. Yeah. One question. Um, I understand uh, uh, Scrum Master and Safe Scrum Master, so Safe and Scrum, they both talk at uh, different levels. Scrum may talk at a uh, team level, and Safe might talk at about organizational level. Um, so if you if you have a CSM, mm -hmm. uh, what do you recommend? Do you recommend to go with uh, um, safe PO or safe CSM again, or so what is if, the right way to go forward from here? So if you have got safe certificate, uh, sorry, Scrum certification, CSM, and uh, then probably, and you, you haven't explored product ownership, product management, hmm. uh, then probably I will say rather than investing your time and effort on doing safe Scrum master, you should do this safe product owner, product manager, because in this course, you'll be explored towards what are the expectations in a scale agile environment. So automatically that framework will be covered. Plus what tools, techniques, skills are required for a product owner, product managers, those things will be also taught. So that way uh, you can gain that knowledge. Yeah, uh, I I understand. So because we are aware of these terms, because we are aware of what is covered in PO, uh, we might go with it. But uh, when certain organizations demand exclusively for safe CSM skill, mm -hmm. uh, how, you know, the first step, the first filtering happens through your resume. So as soon as they don't see this, you might not get even filtered for it. You might not even get uh, filtered for the role. So how do we challenge this or how do we mitigate this risk or approach? So I think uh, if there is a strict criteria that you need to have self scrum master certification, then there's no choice, right? You have to do that. But I have seen organizations saying that you need to have either CSM, PSM or safe scrum master. And if you already have got safe scrum master, then uh, I think there's no point uh, in, you know, uh, uh, in that case, probably you are, you are already shortlisted, right? But some organizations are just focused on safe scrum master, then in that case, and if you don't have that, then I think you have answered your question. You have to do that one. No, um, no, my point is if you have a safe PO as well, so mm -hmm. they, they may not understand that the safe CSM or safe scrum master course gets covered in safe PO, then from that point of view, you know, it's, it's filtering out. Right. So, yeah. So how do we showcase ourselves there? That's, that's my point. That's my concern there. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's have an offline conversation because I need sure, to sure. All right. Yeah. So, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. So understand where you are, what kind of credentials and knowledge you have got, because it's not always just about, you know, cracking that interview. Sometimes it's all about, let's say if you join an organization and you're asked to facilitate discovery workshop, right? Or feature decomposition workshop or prioritization workshop. Uh, have you got those skills? If not, then probably gaining knowledge on product owner, product manager front might be useful. Similarly, when we look at product owner role, you have to uh, have these skills 
uh, with you if you want to play that role effectively. Uh, quite often I have seen product owners, product managers transition from the role like a business analyst or business owner or someone who is working in the business operational world. But at the end of the day, you want to have ability to create vision, you need to have ability to create a backlog, refine backlog and then make those decisions based on what matter most and then create a product roadmaps. For this, if you are new to the agile world, uh, these are the you know few courses which you can do to have the formal learning. So say product owner, product manager, which we have discussed, if you already got, let's say even from Scrum, if you have got uh, product owner certification, then you can look at advanced product management course, which focuses on advanced techniques and tactics to grow as a leader. And leading safe provides more idea about, you know, what different core competencies are there as a product owner or product manager, how you are supposed to interact when it comes to prioritizing work at a big uh, group level. Agile coach and consultant here, the game changes because now expectation is that you have got more knowledge. So you should have a knowledge of a lot of lean agile practice practices. Uh, you should have business mastery. That means you should be good in product ownership as well as management. Uh, transformational mastery is all about change management, system thinking, how you deal with those changes, resistances. Facilitation is big room planning, how you will be able to do that, uh, so on and so forth. So it's a role where expectation is that you have got more knowledge. Quite often people who have played role of a scrum master or someone who has role, played role of agile delivery manager or someone who has played role of a even senior product owner or product manager, I have seen transition into agile coach or consultant role. Uh, again, uh, discipline agile senior scrum master. This course, even though it's called senior scrum master, it's more suitable for those who want to explore different ways through which agility can be applied. So uh, this one, wherein you will be exposed to Discipline Agile Toolkit, Kanban Coach, Kanban Specific Knowledge, Enterprise Agility Change Consultant, wherein as Che was saying that if you face a lot of challenges in change management, you might want to explore this world. And then bare minimum things which are required is that product owner or product manager knowledge, uh, even if it's not advanced, but at least you should be able to understand and connect dots and then leading safe how to work in a big organization. Uh, Sandeep, if I may ask a question. Yes. On the toolkit, when we say it's a toolkit, mm -hmm. are we talking about it is uh, give, giving us some kind of understanding or idea to understand the scope? Yep. Or, or is it again going to talk something about, so the, the, the content of the course, if I am talking about, and, I'm, and I'm, as per our previous discussion, right, I'm interested with this course. So mm -hmm. is, it, is it going to help in terms of uh, that which framework where we have to apply and identify what is the scope is is it that what is what is going to be part of the content yes yes that's how it is so there there is uh, there are guidelines and it's a goal based approach mm -hmm. like if you work in a team where you don't need more than eight to ten team members uh, problem area which you are solving is a simple or probably doesn't need to have a lot of dependencies or other teams uh, it provides guideline how you can approach it so it's a uh, Goal-based approach, you need to understand what you are trying to achieve, what is the context, what are the, uh, you know, uh, what kind of team you are handling, whether everyone is part of same organization, different organizations, uh, what kind of problem area you are looking at, uh, whether you are working in a regulated environment, uh, using all those things, uh, this toolkit provide guideline, uh, you know, what can be picked and choose. But but it on it's on a team level, right? Not on. No. Uh, so it, it it goes beyond team, and that's why okay. this discipline agile senior scrum master course look at reporting, metrics, governance, planning, which needs to be done even at a group level, or portfolio okay. level. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Always. No Is it already time now? Uh, send it. Yeah, I was just. Uh, I think we are having really interesting conversation. So probably yeah. what we'll do, we'll keep going. Those who can't make it, feel free to drop off. Uh, but I think we have got still 10 to 15 minutes worth of uh, topics to be discussed. Uh, anyway, we are recording this session. So if you can't make it beyond this time, that's fine. So thank you, Sandeep. I, there was one question by me in the, in the chat. Is uh, Do we also receive those slides? Yeah, I will, I will see whether I can share these slides. At least recording will be available. If possible, I will share slides as well for reference. Thank you very much, Cindy.
Thanks, Ramit. So uh, I think 10 to 15 minutes more. If you uh, have got, Sandeep, uh, no challenges. Sandeep, I have to drop off as well. I have a uh, meeting. I have no a hand reason. stop. I have one question, Sandeep. You suggested a book in the beginning, right? Uh, would you help me to know the name of the book again? Yeah, I'll share those things with you. This was your sure, Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. No worries. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. So next one is agile delivery or program management. This role requires that you still have got those skills which are required for any project manager, delivery manager, program manager, like delivery support, what needs to be done when it comes to securing funds, what it needs to be done when it comes to providing those reports, governance, so on and so forth. But at the same time, expectation is that you leverage agile and lean practices. So rather than doing uh, top down planning, or assuming that you know you are the only one who has got all knowledge and the skills, you rely on collective knowledge of the team and apply all those lean agile principles and practices. Third aspect of this is team health and happiness. So if you go back to the lean uh, house of lean, uh, the first thing which was there, uh, like when you deliver value, it should be delivered at the shortest acceptable lead time, without compromising on team morale and customer value. The so team health and happiness is about how you can deliver changes without compromising on quality, as well as without compromising on the team's health. Now, if you want to transition into this role, uh, again, Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master Toolkit will help you to understand what kind of reports, what kind of metrics, what kind of planning approaches you can apply. Leading Safe is all about understanding if you want to run that big room planning session, quarterly planning session where more than 100 team members are there, what things you can consider if it comes to uh, breaking down work into small chunks so that you can have some progress made at a regular interval and you can show those reports and uh, you know leverage those benefits how how those things can be done so leading safe is another uh, good starting point to gain that knowledge usually if you are acting as a program manager or delivery managers quite often you work with the business stakeholders or business sponsors and that's, that's when uh, you might want to understand different techniques which are used for product management and product ownership. So how you can run those innovation or inception workshops, what kind of prioritization techniques you can apply. So for that, probably product owner, product manager course might be a good, good uh, you know, add. And most importantly, if you want to grow in a career and go beyond traditional funding model, go beyond how things are you know, managed at a program or portfolio level, then you might want to consider lean portfolio management as an advanced course. This is lean portfolio manager is more suitable for those who want, who are already playing role of a senior project manager or delivery manager, right? And they want to understand in a big organization when agile is getting adopted, how you can have those uh, funding, funding models or how you are going to have those budgeting guardrails in place. For LPM or Lean Portfolio Management requirement is that at least you should have done Leading Safe or one of the safe courses. Uh, only then it helps to understand because it's a, again another co competency where you will be exposed to a lot of advanced topics. So these are the things which will help you to progress in your career as Agile Delivery or Program Manager. Uh, now when we talk about Team Practitioner, and as a team practitioner, probably you don't want to play any of those specialist roles in an agile world. You, you want to stick doing what you are doing. But still, if you want to be a good agile team member or practitioner, you need to have a bit of knowledge about all those things which I mentioned here. Like how, what, what's your role, how you are supposed to perform your role effectively as an agile team member in a scrum environment or probably Kanban environment. What kind of, uh, you know, Agile meetings you can expect and where do you add value or what are the expectations from you when it comes to backlog refinement or when work is getting broken down or during retrospective how you can effectively contribute. So all those basic skills, basic knowledge is provided in uh, these particular courses. So Scale Agile Practitioner focuses more on as a team member, if you are going to work in a new team. Uh, what are those ceremonies? What are your expectations? How work will be estimated? What will be your role when it comes to, you know, participating in daily standup or participating or implementing all those built in quality uh, practices like TDD, BDD, so on and so forth. Scrum one practitioner talks about if you work in a hybrid kind of environment wherein Kanban as well as Scrum is used, 
as a team member what is expected from you and kanban professional is more focused towards kanban teams so as a participant in a kanban team environment how and what you can expect so these are the few steps if you want to become a successful uh, agile leader it doesn't matter where you are and where you want to go uh, usually it helps to have some formal learning the reason i quite often emphasize and there are different uh, group of thoughts uh, even on linkedin people who bash all those people who are doing certifications and then those who says that you know experience comes from real world uh, you know hands on learning through that you actually learn things if you ask me my understanding is that it doesn't harm to have formal learning and it actually helps you as someone was mentioning earlier during an interview uh, or during you know applying for any role if bare minimum requirement is that you have got industry recognized certification so it doesn't harm to have that knowledge and quite often it helps you to start at a right level by understanding what's there as a source of truth in let's say you know scale agile framework or what's there as a source of truth in a kanban or discipline agile so if you want to grow your in your career probably i'll recommend to do industry recognized certifications in different areas based on where you are where you want to go next thing is find a mentor because mentor helps you to fast track your career and this is what i have experienced throughout my career whenever i was working with any mentor i got different perspective altogether so with the with the help of any agile expert you can fast track your career you can understand what needs to be done when next thing is networking and connecting with learning groups like this one so when only when you interact with other professionals who are working in different industry different region different geography different domain you learn and understand how things can be tackled differently another way is to pair and shadow agile practitioner so if you know someone probably you can tag along you can ask that person can i come and join you or probably let's have uh, this uh, you know a regular catch up when we i can act as a uh, someone who who can just you know provide fresh pair of eyes to existing challenges and let's have that informal conversation going about how day has been and last okay. but most important thing is go deep by reading lean agile books so throughout uh, those who have done at least a few certifications they might have seen that at least in scale agile framework there is a reference to several books if you do leading safe course there are more than 10 books which are re referred if you have done discipline agile course there are four to five or six books referred if you want to gain more knowledge probably you need to go deeper so read those books listen to a podcast watch those videos when more information about those books have been provided and that's another way to uh, you know succeed in your agile leadership role so this takes us towards the end of the session so what i suggest uh probably uh, if you don't have any questions i'm conscious of the time uh, you can just go on menti.com and then just click mention this code which you can see on the screen 70414553 and and just in a few words it will help to understand what you have learned so far so that will be that that will be quite useful for the upcoming sessions let me know if anyone is facing any difficulties in uh, logging logging into menti.com Um, hi Sandeep. So I've just submitted my response. Uh, I'll drop off. Cool. No worries. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Me. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Sandeep. Um, I'm Sai. I'm also leaving.
thanks thanks for this um i'll connect with you offline sandeep yeah okay. so i'll message you no worries mate all good cool uh those who are still there i will appreciate if you just you know uh, you should be able to see this question on your screen if you just write in few words what you like about this session that can be used for upcoming sessions as a as a feedback And these are the, if you want, you can, you know, connect with me through different means. So Agility Academy uh, is where, you know, we have got a lot of trainings and uh, knowledge sharing uh, session details are captured. So this is the bar scan code. Uh, if you want to connect with me on WhatsApp, this is the one and then I'm available. I think we are connected on LinkedIn. Uh, if we are not, uh, you can you can connect with me and I'll be more than Hey, Clement. Yes. Clement? I can't hear you, mate. It's all right. The, so, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for your participation and stay tuned. Probably there will be more learning opportunities. If you need any help, any support, feel free to reach out to me through different means. And I'm happy to help you in your agile journey. Anything else from anyone before we close this session? No, all good. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank you. day. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, Sandeep.